Afternoon all, Pedge Boyich back again. Fitness expert, ex-professional footballer, love an entrepreneurial life and love storytelling. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the ups and downs and the stop starts that we have in the fitness world around weight loss, weight gain, muscle toning, all those jazzes of goals that everyone has and how as a collective group we all go through these things and also as myself have gone through this and recently I've gone through this and that's why I wanna talk about it. And the reason that came about was actually this morning, one of my newest clients in personal training uh, was opening up to me about what they want to achieve and the stops and starts and the struggles that they have. And the key thing is important to establish connection between the one and the two is that I as a trainer have also gone through this myself and that's where that experience can come in handy to help people overcome these obstacles. And the reason how mine came about in the last few months was being a professional for 15 plus years and being in the health game for almost 15 years now, I've always pretty much maintained fitness and being in shape. Yes, along the way, I've had injuries um, that's kept me back for a number of months or whatnot, but in this last year and a bit, I've actually really let go of myself and um, for a number of reasons, which I'll get into in another story. But what's happened is I've actually put on, well, I did put on about seven to nine kilos and for me that is a huge gain compared to what I have. I've always been one or two kilos over, quickly get that back into into the season of football or in the health game. Um, so hitting that nine kilo extra was very new to me and quite challenging in a sense from a mental aspect. I was very depressed going through those stages, um, anxiety crept in, stresses, um, the lack of motivation around it mainly. Uh, you know, the struggle to get out of bed where I would bounce up at 5 a.m., ready to go, tackle the day, and off I go. But the delay button kept coming. You know, those snoozes every day were like, oh, let me just sleep another 10 minutes, another 20 minutes. You know what? Let's do the workout later today. It's not that important. So my mind started playing tricks on me. All these loud noises in my mind saying, do it later. Not important. Let it go. Uh, and then you become part of that habit where it's not that important anymore. It's only, what, five, six kilos? Leave it. And you start to actually stop looking at yourself, which is a common theme when we're not happy with ourselves, we ignore the mirrors in our houses that we live in, because um, we don't want to remind ourselves of what we're at and we're not confident in ourselves and we don't want to be there. And that was a new experience for me because over the years helping clients, I've understood their goals and I've understood their emotional connection to things that they need to improve on. Um, but that was one thing that it was hard for me to resonate and connect to, so I had to try and dig deeper around other situations to, to, to connect with my client on those bases. And this is the first time in my life that I've actually gone through this and it was a big, big challenge to overcome. And I have to admit, um, I now I've lost about six kilos of that with added muscle. Um, so I'm back to a stage where I'm very happy. You know, those other three, four kilos where I can really fine tune will be a choice I make whether I need to or not, um, but I'm quite happy and I'm feeling strong and fit right now. And the journey to get there was was it was a tough one. Um, the stops and the starts are the main thing that were the problems where um, I remember sometimes getting up at 5 a.m., going for, say, a three-minute run where I would normally do 20, 25-minute run and be comfortable. Three minutes in, I'm fatigued. My legs are heavy, and I'm just like, what am I doing? I have to stop. So I'm stopping three minutes into a run and then sitting around for half an hour waiting for my next client where I'll be really pumped. The energy that I take from that workout into my clients is what lifts them as well. So it's important that also your energy levels are quite high as well to translate and help others as well. Um, so along the way, those challenges were quite difficult. The, the early mornings, because I'm an early morning riser, not by choice, um, I'm very lazy actually. People that do know me will know that um, I'm not one to naturally want to walk. Um, there's a joke that if I have to walk 100 meters somewhere and I can drive, I'll drive that 100 meters. So for me to work out, I have to program myself to be a soldier, to go 100% all the time. And the difficulty of getting that is the challenge, but once you get it, it's the best feeling ever because you just program, you up, you go on, you go. So that was a bit lost with me. Um, and, and it continued for months. And it was a stage where I think maybe for six weeks, no, maybe four, 
I um, I lost three kilos and I was on that trend and then it just came back down. Um, something happened, knocked me back down and I lost that momentum and went back to the original goal. Well, not the original goal, the original loss of eight, nine kilos. And I was back to square one again. So I, I was defeated one more time. Um, my workouts were half-hearted. I, I knew what I wanted to do, but knowing sometimes isn't always the case. It's, you know, it's, it's the mentality of it, of feeling strong, knowing I can conquer this goal, this is what I'm going to do. Um, I didn't have that. I didn't have that desire. I didn't have that like lion's heart. Um, I felt defeated, felt weak. Uh, so all my workouts were 30% of what I could do. And I thought that was okay. And I told myself that I'm okay with that. You know, the excuse that I used a lot, which I've seen with my clients is, you know, I work too hard um, or I don't have time. Yeah, yeah I was working hard um, with my other business, sorry, saying I didn't have time. But it's all bullshit at the end of the day. You know, you, you create those lies in your own head and then you start to believe them and that's when you start telling. And we all go through, I think that's the part of being a human is, you know, we're allowed to be down. We can't always be on the top of our game, um, especially as fitness experts ourselves. Like, I'm sure every single trainer out there has gone through it all and a lot of their motivation to help others is because of they been through it and they don't want to see their clients either. They want to help people achieve their goals too. So... Today's talk is around how quickly can you overcome those obstacles of the stop start to tackle your goals and keep moving forward. Um, real challenge is that you've got to have that real self-belief about is it really that goal that you really want? And what I'm, why I say that it is I've always had this rule around all my clients that I've trained. Um, being a professional football player, there's certain programs, certain styles of training you do for your sport. It's very specific. Same as a weightlifter to a boxer to someone who's sedentary and just has a nine to five job every day. You can't do the same one program for all. And I think people, especially today with all this social media presence and seeing all these wow factors around workouts, um, you know, from gymnastic style lifting to CrossFit um, to all these big circus style training, they, th they, they see it and I think it's amazing. That's what they need. It's not necessarily the case. Uh, I, for all, have... I think probably on a 99% ratio with all my clients, I've never once did a deadlift with any of them. And the reason for that is a deadlift is a great exercise. Don't get me wrong. It's very powerful and great strengthening exercise, but it's also a high risk of causing a lot of problems for the lower back, glutes and hamstrings. Um, so the question is to the clients that always wanted to do these deadlifts because I saw it on you know the big weightlifters, the CrossFit, and ask the question, why do you need to do a deadlift? What's the purpose for your goal? What's the purpose for your lifestyle? And the question comes back, well, I don't know. Well, I go, well, I'll tell you why. The deadlift isn't important for you to, to lift because the way you live your life is not going to be effective. We can do other exercises around that to complement the certain parts of the body to strengthen, which is fine. But why put your body on that, under that load and risk for something that looks cool or seems to be a trend? That's, that's a big step for people to understand. And don't be fascinated to be part of some forms of cultures because it's cool. But the problem there is injuries come, then you've got more expenses for physios, the stop start, you start to give up. So many people I've seen give up on a gym because they've gone so hard, they've hurt themselves and they've gone back to square one. And so, you know what, not for me, I'm over it, it's not important. It's not really true. You know you, you, you're hurt from it because you've gone so hard and then you've been, you know, not that you let yourself down, but you've been let down from circumstances around the program or the workout itself. Um, so my clients would never really do a deadlift. Um, again, it's very specific to their goal. Some have, it's funny, everyone always changes their goals along the way. No matter where you start, your end goal will always be different. I have not met one person yet or myself that has stuck to one goal for many years. It's always changed, always something new. Um, if one person loses 10 kilos, that was their main goal. Fantastic, once they get to that 10 kilos, they're like, you know what? Maybe I want to master doing pull-ups now because I've gotten stronger. So now they want to do maximum of their own pull-ups, which was never in their mind before. Once they've done that, they'll say, you know what? Let's try boxing. So you got to fine-tune where your level is at and what makes you happy and what's going to give you that drive to go forward. Um, and it's not always has to be a personal trainer. I don't think it's for everyone or group training. Um, you know, there's a lot of online things out there too. Uh, I'm... 
I'm not a huge fan of online training. Uh, I've never really looked to promote it. I think, I think it's very important to have a very close connection with someone in terms of the motivational side. Because I think if you're looking for purely, you know, the good old weight loss, muscle toning, basic strengthening, I don't think the formula of exercises is that tricky. I think you can download them. You can do them in the gym. The reason why I say that is, is there's so many times I've manipulated workouts to change things and still achieve the same result at the end of it. For myself first, personally, I like to try things out. Um, unless it's very specific orientated to a sport where it comes down to rep sets and all that jazz, which is very important, that's different. But otherwise, the main factor around having the presence of a trainer or whatnot is that pure motivation, the pure cue points, and how to keep you on top of your game to make sure that you're achieving your goals. That's, I think, the most important thing there to have. Now, if it comes down to costs, that's fine. Do the group training, which is cheaper. Or, you know, train for friends that is on the, <coughs> sorry about that, is on the same level as you. I think that's important. Um, because then through the workout, it's gonna flow. There's a lot of times where I've known I've trained with people who might be stronger than me in this or I'm stronger in that and it just, there's too much stop start, there's a lot of chit chat and I think that chit chat is a big problem too in gyms. It's not, you're, yeah, you're there to socialize, but you're there to do a job to get things done to achieve what you need for yourself. Um, so I'll be, that's my few, few tips around that. Um, so back to my challenges along the way these last few weeks, uh, months, sorry. Um, the early morning rises were the biggest challenges and then the night cha the nighttime ones. Because I, when I'm in my peak, I'm training about two times a day. Um, I'm not going to go into detail what I'm doing. It's it going to be quite boring. I think the main message here is about how I overcame it. And the little wins along the way, it was all about the main thing that got me was I had to have an emotional connection to why I needed to drop back down to this weight. And that's what I was searching for for, for a number of months. I couldn't understand for myself, why do I need to lose eight, nine kilos? I'm not playing professional football anymore. I don't need to be peak ripped condition for my sport. Um, I'm not doing any forms of like so-called modeling that needs your shirt off, therefore to look good. Um, my business doesn't require me to feel lean and fit. So I couldn't find those cue points about what I needed to do to be on the top of my game. And then, and then it kind of hit me one day where I was actually struggling to get out of bed. Um, I saw myself in the mirror and <laughs> my tailored suit that I haven't worn for a very long time, uh, my pants didn't fit me. And that's when it hit me. I was like, you, I won't say what I said, but that's what emotionally got me there. I was like, those pants have to fit me. And that was the end of it. I got into training with less stop starts because I had that emotional connection to what I needed to do. And the morning started to become a little bit easier in the sense where it was a struggle through the workouts, but my mind was telling me to overcome it, to keep going, keep pushing, keep driving. And I, um, well, sorry, what I mentioned before is that while I was doing these early workouts, I was actually starting to have energy drinks to give myself energy for the morning, which is something I never used to really do. Uh, so I was starting to have energy drinks. And while I couldn't complete workouts, I'm on these energy drinks, which is giving me a quick high and then a quick low. And we all know what can sugar can do. Um, again, I'll get into sugar in another conversation. So now I'm going through these workouts, finishing them in you know 30 to 40 minutes and feeling better about myself. I'm starting to see strength gains uh, not so much physical appearance and weight loss, I'm starting to see fitness levels increase, which was the first key step. Then then I started to see a start, slight change in weight, um, which I've never really been too fixated on. I think weight is a dangerous thing to look at. Uh, it's something I've never really pushed on my clients because I think it's important to know how you feel every day and how you look. Um, like I said, for me, it was my suit pants. I mean... You can still be the same weight, but look 10 times different. And that's that's the chance. I would ignore looking at numbers a lot. I think it's a good point here and there, but stay off it. Um, so I started to lose weight, and then I started to realize my recovery sessions were getting better, and therefore I could start to lift more. Um, 
Don't get me wrong, I'm still not out of the woods yet. I'm still struggling to get up. I'm still snoozing, but not as much now. Um, I pushed my workouts to 6 a.m. versus 5 now to give myself a little bit more rest because I felt like I wasn't at that 5 a.m. yet. And that's not for everyone, by the way, too. You're not a morning session or you're not a night session. You've got to figure that for yourself. It's very hard to force something on someone that's not equipped to do that. Say, for instance, I'm not a lunchtime person. I can't work out at lunchtime. It's too tiring for me. I don't feel, I feel flat. So I'm a morning and occasionally I'm a very nighttime person as well. Um, so then the snoozers were getting less. I started getting up. Um, I still haven't quite got that bounce yet out of bed. And then there was a moment where I think it was about three weeks ago where it just changed. I just, I was, I was in the gym and I was doing this workout that I was doing for about two and a half weeks. And once I got towards the end of the set of what I normally do, so I knew what I was doing, I wasn't tired. And I was like, all right, keep going and keep going. And I didn't really want to stop. I was like, I'm not really tired here. This is interesting. And I actually went, f I did the four sets continuously without any rest, where normally I have rest, three minute rest. So I'm, I'm saving about 10 minutes of rest here. And I just flowed. But while I was flowing, the confidence grew, the energy grew. So therefore, from two factors, I was just feeling like I was invincible. I was like, yes, the old me's coming back. And it felt great. And that was the defining moment, what changed me. And since then, I've just gone into beast mode. And I feel now I am back to where I need to be in order to tackle every day. And now, I'm up every morning. I'm pretty much bouncing out now. And I did do a little snooze thing to people the other day about leaving your phone five meters away. Um, I don't have to do that now. Uh, far, sorry, five meters away from your bed. So you, therefore you have to get up to turn your phone off. Therefore you kind of up, you don't need to get back into bed. So I'm past that stage now where I'm snooze up, boom, I'm out. And I'm loving it. Sorry, my battery went low there. Um, and now I'm feeling very fine, fit, strong. And the thing that I was getting to was, well, sorry, I lost my mic because of my battery there. Um, I'm two, three kilos away to where I can be at my peak. I'm not going to push myself to get there. I'm very comfortable where I am. Um, and now with my clients also, I am starting to give them the real direction that they need behind their struggles of the stop starts in, in, in this situation here, because I've really gone through and understood it myself. Um, and then the key factors for them will be down to the fact that they need to fine check what they need day to day, what their lists are, what they need to achieve, and they can do that um, with me. So for you, I guess what I'm trying to say is, it's okay to have these stop starts. It's, it's annoying and it's frustrating and it gives doubt in your mind, but try not to give up at all, I know it's a difficult situation, I know it's hard to do, but we all got in ourselves to step up and keep moving forward. We're human at the end of the day, we're not perfect, we're not designed like robots, we can't maintain high performance at all. And I think um, athletes are the best examples for that. If you look at the best athletes in the world, they never stay on top all year round. It's very, and tennis is a great example. If you look at the top tennis players in the world, they can win grand slams and then they just drop off. Injured, come back, don't perform the best. It's hard. It's impossible. You can't do it. So un understanding where you're plateauing and where you're peaking is important too. Um, keep conversating with yourself around what your goals are, what's important for you. If it's your trainer, obviously that's the guidelines that they'll set for you as well. Um, so what I want to say to you is when you're stopping, the key is how do you get rid of those noises around around you that are telling you the negative thoughts to get into the starting mode, to have those positive thoughts. You have to really understand your true value of what you are and what you really want to do in the fitness world for yourself to achieve those goals. Because the consequences are huge when you stop feeling fit. Your, menta your mentality becomes negative, you become slow, sloppy, and so that's affect your personal life, or your friends, your work, everything. The health game is so important, and I haven't even touched on diet yet. That's, that's a separate conversation. For me, the mental side of things is so important. If you can't get your mindset right, it doesn't mean anything. You, won't, you can lift all the weights in the world, but if your mind's not there, you're not gonna achieve it. 
So tell yourself that, make sure you're on top of the game. And I really wanna hear anyone, please give me some feedback about situations you've been involved around the stop-start situations of training, or you've gone, you've achieved maximum results and then you've plateaued, which is a stopping part. And now you don't know where to go. That's another one too, where that knowing the next phase of hitting such great results is another challenge too. So please drop a comment in here or send me via email, I don't mind. Either way, let's conversate, let's connect, you know, share some stories. I think it's an amazing way to get, up, to get off your chest as well. You know, being a trainer myself, I'm happy to explain this, share my thoughts. I've got more to come around fitness as well. And um, I look forward to your response. Thanks for watching.